Hi, my dear audience. Welcome back to the Talk Salon Talk to View. Today, we have a renowned theoretical physicist, Professor Jeffrey West from the Santa Fe Institute. Um, Professor West visits here to give his keynote speeches at the Seoul Future Conference 2022. Hello, yeah. Professor. Thank you, Alex. Pleasure to be here. Thank yeah. you for inviting me. Yeah, it's very my honor to have you. Now, I would like to start our conversation with your book, The Scale. So could you give the, the brief, tell me about what it's about? To whom would you like to recommend? It was written for what uh, in English uh, called the intelligent layperson. It's not written for a technical audience. There are no mathemat mathematical equations. It's all written in, well, in English or in Korean in this case. It was written to express, first of all, the great unity and interconnection of all things around us as is implied by the subtitle, namely about life, organisms, the way we work, but the way the whole biosphere works, but also how that is connected to the, um, the kinds of institutions and the kind of um, socioeconomic system that we have developed on the planet in the last uh, two or three hundred years, um, namely cities, because cities are the driving force, actually, of our socioeconomic life. So how cities work and how companies work. Mm -hmm. But in particular, to develop and provide a language, a new language, for talking about the science, the underlying science of cities and uh, companies, to put them um, in a predictable, quantitative, um, computable, a framework that we can both, first of all, in terms of giving insights into these critical aspects of the, of, the, of the life around us, but also to provide a framework for thinking about dealing with some of the big questions that we're facing on the planet, including the very biggest of questions about the um, long-term sustainability, not just of these institutions, but of the entire planet. Mm -hmm. It was a very ambitious work, and um, part of the challenge uh, was to take a, uh, a conceptual framework that is developed with a mathematical language and put it into a framework where there is no mathematics. Oh. And by the way, originally I had in mind that um, I'm writing this book for my mother. Uh, so the, who is no long, long time dead, okay. sadly, but so that to explain to her what I did with my life. My mother was not a very well educated person, uh -huh. but I'm pleased to say that my sisters and my the rest of my family do, uh, un do did understand a lot of this. Oh, so uh, so okay. in that sense, I succeed. I partially succeeded, but it is written for those that are interested in trying to understand underlying. Uh, regularity and systematic behavior that underlies what appears to be arbitrary, uh, uh, the arbitrariness and chaotic nature of the messy world mm -hmm. around us. Oh, so um, especially the last part uh, you mentioned is uh, so touching. And uh, as the first time, I was a little afraid that you are the, the physicist. So I'm a little afraid to start <laughs> to reading. But uh, I totally agree, and I'm very happy to hear that your the original <laughs> idea of the writing this book. So I like that one. <laughs> so, okay, let's go to the second question. So the, um, the you are the theological physicist, and the, you are showing the uh, the word, the logic of the scale in here, as you mentioned, with the best of the data analysis, yes. and in which is uh, the also you also mentioned about the city. The interesting part on this book, I found that even the size of the city goes the doubles. It does not require the right. the double the urban infrastructures. So it, you express that uh, efficiency. What is your the comments uh, saying the for the citizens the happiness beyond uh, <laughs> efficiency? So uh, this is a very hard question to answer. Um, but, uh, so let me just put it in context. 
that um, so the laws that we discovered and tried to explain and tried to explain in the book are that if you double the size of a city um, you save roughly 15 percent on all infrastructure of the length of the roads, the electoral lines, mm -hmm. the, the buildings, um, uh, the number of um, uh, gasoline stations, all infrastructure um, you save about 15 percent with each doubling. So the bigger the city the less infrastructure you need per capita mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, for it to function. So that's so there's this great economy of scale, this great efficiency, as you say, uh, greater efficiency as you increase in size. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the driving forces, mm -hmm. in fact, underlying the growth of cities. But what is even more interesting is that uh, with this doubling of size is that all socioeconomic activity increases increases by 15 percent. Oh. So if you double the size, um, you, you don't get just um, the, the average wage, for example, increases not by a factor of two, of course, but it increases by 15 percent. So um, the innovation of a city, the number of patents produced, increases by 15 percent. Uh, but so all the good things increase the amount of um, the, the number of fancy restaurants, colleges, and so on, on the average, increase by 15%. But at the same time, that's the good part, the bad and the ugly increases. Mm -hmm. So you get 15% more crime, typically, 15% more disease, 15% more COVID, for example. And so the good, the bad, and the ugly come together mm -hmm. in, in, a, in this way. So the reason that they all do it together in the same way. So that's the surprising thing. Everything does it together. They're all interconnected because the underlying theory, the underlying dynamic is from social networks because yeah. the city is the, the, the instrument, the machine in order to facilitate social interaction. And so the bigger the city, the, more the, the population the more the number of interactions are taking place and those number of interactions lead to a greater um, opportunities, to greater excitement, therefore to greater um, financial activity, but also to these negative things. So now going to the, your real question, yes, namely um, how can you use this? I think it's extremely important that um, uh, mayors of city, the administration of a city, understand that these laws are at work. And I think that is crucial for city planners, for uh, uh, development, mm -hmm. for grow, understanding growth, for in increasing the, um, the good and well-being of citizens to understand that these laws are at work and to work with them. So when thinking about planning or uh, policy and so forth, one should have these metrics at your fingertips. So, so another way of saying it, if you know the size of a city, you can predict within an urban system, you can predict how many police it should have, mm -hmm. how much crime there should be, uh, how many schools there should be and so on. So you should know, so when you look at your city, you know whether you're overperforming or underperforming mm -hmm. relative to the size of the city as it grows. When you're thinking of 5, 10, 25, 50 years into the future, knowing that these laws are at work and knowing that they are, their origin is in social interaction. Yeah. So that an understanding therefore that the city is not just the buildings and the roads and the system, but is in fact the whole point of a city are the people. The job of, of city planners and administrators is to, to facilitate social interaction, mm -hmm. facilitate, therefore, entrepreneurship and so on. I see. Okay, very good ideas. Um, I, I, I hope it's...